Martin Luther, my historical hero, called the book of Galatians the Magna Carta of Christian freedom. That's what he called it. It was through this book, this letter of Paul's, that Luther came to see God's amazing grace and the freedom that it produces. As you may know, he was a Roman Catholic monk in the 1500s. Um, and when he read both Romans and Galatians, the scales fell off of his eyes and he began to realize that we are made right with God because of what God has done, not because of what we do. And that set Luther ablaze. And as a result, the Protestant Reformation was launched and the world was never the same. The gospel literally changed the world. Well, during his time, Luther was engaged in an all-out war for the gospel. The Roman Catholic Church of his day had distorted the message of grace and replaced it with a message of things that have to be done in order to ensure God's love and approval. They replaced salvation by grace with salvation by works. So they were all about preaching works, work, work, do more, try harder, get better, get cleaner, uh, make yourself right for God type stuff. Um, and uh, Luther taught against this. He wrote against this. He ranted and raved against this. He was a bombastic personality. I mean, if you're going to pick a fight, uh, a theological fight, the wrong guy to pick a fight with during that time was Martin Luther because he was just unbending in his convictions. Um, and when he was finally brought to trial by the Roman Catholic Church in his day and pressured to recant, he was pressured. You have to recant everything that you've written and everything that you've said. And if not, you'll have to suffer the consequences. Um, and so when he was on trial, brought to trial and pressured to recant, he simply said, to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. That's the way his speech closed. Luther was so convinced that grace and freedom were the message of Christianity that he was willing to be excommunicated for his beliefs. He was willing to die for what he knew to be true. Well, I would say that the performance-driven, do-it-yourself, be-all-you-can-be-for-God version of Christianity that pervades the church today sadly mirrors the Catholic church during Luther's time. Suffice it to say for now that if there was ever a need for the message of Galatians to be championed all over again, it is now. Galatians um, is unlike any of Paul's other letters in that in all of his other letters, he normally begins with lots of encouragement. He says a lot of nice things and he encourages the recipients of his letter, but not Galatians. He's not kind and warm-hearted in Galatians, after his initial greeting to the Christians there, he goes off on them. Like Luther after him, Paul is enraged because the Galatian Christians had abandoned the gospel of grace for a religion of rules. Abandon it. They had abandoned grace for works, and in doing so, they had abandoned freedom for slavery. So Paul's angry, and with the arrival of Jesus, those rituals were thrown out. But there were a host of uh, Christians in the region of Galatia who uh, were believing that, no, we still have to be circumcised. In, order, in other words, it, whether we're Jewish or not, we have to become Jewish in order to be made right with God. Uh, and Paul is enraged by that. When the gospel of grace is abandoned, when freedom is abandoned, it's not a good thing. Uh, it's an affront to God and what God has done for us. So he starts with what seems to be simply a formal greeting. Although it's much more than that, much more. You'll notice in all of Paul's letters, all of the ones that Paul wrote, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Corinthians, um, in all of his letters, Paul gives the gospel right at the beginning with the words grace and peace. Now, we read typically right past those greetings at the beginning of his letters, thinking that there's really nothing more going on there than just a, a simple, cordial salutation. But 
That's not true. Paul, in every single one of his letters, goes straight to the heart of the gospel by saying the words grace and peace. And what he wants us to know, before he launches into everything he's about to say in this letter, what he wants us to know is that grace is the root of the gospel, the anchor of the gospel. And peace is the fruit of the gospel. True peace, or what my grandmother used to call a quiet knowing that all is well, that inner sense of shalom, that inner sense of settledness, true peace, Paul wants us to know, is only possible for a heart that is gripped by grace. 